Okay, good evening everyone and welcome to the FNSS Year End Concert. My name is Sarah Toffelmeyer and I will be your MC for this evening. You're in for a real treat tonight as the students have been working very hard since their last concert to prepare fun new music to share with everyone here. Before we begin tonight's program, we have a few quick reminders. To allow the full concentration of the performers, we do ask that you take a few moments to make sure that you've turned off any cell phones or other noisy electronic devices that can make any noise during the performance as this could be a real distraction. We also ask that you please do not take any flash photography while we are in the middle of a performance um, as that also could be a distraction. We hope that you could stay for the entire evening, but if you do have to leave, we do ask that you wait until there is a break in the music before you exit or enter the theater, as again, this can be a distraction to not only the performers, but the audience. Thank you for your cooperation. Um, before we get started, we have a birthday shout out to Chastity Bentham. Happy birthday, Chastity, yay! <laughs> You're somewhere out there. Oh, there you are, right in the front. Perfect. Uh, thank you for your cooperation again. With all that out of the way, we can now get to the music. The first group that you see on stage in front of you right now to perform this evening is the Fort Nelson Secondary School Concert Band. In 1940, Disney released Fantasia, a series of eight animated shorts set to classical music. The original idea was to release a new Fantasia every few years featuring new music and new animations. However, due to the war and cost of production, Walt Disney's dream never came to be. It wasn't until the year 2000 when Disney finally produced a follow-up to the original movie. The arrangement we are going to hear tonight by Jay Bocock features music from three of the shorts, Beethoven's Fifth Symphony, Dukas' Sorcerer's Apprentice, and Stravinsky's Firebird Suite. Here is Fantasia 2000.
Sometimes words alone cannot adequately explain something, and this is the case with Endless Rainbows. Band teacher Jeff Zilk contacted the composer about writing a piece for his group. However, the nature of this commission changed drastically when one of Jeff's students passed away a day before he was supposed to enter the eighth grade. The tragedy occurred during a family gathering at a local pond. As the family desperately tried to come to grips with an impossible situation, something very special happened. The day of the funeral, a gorgeous double rainbow formed over the pond where Ben Steep passed away. Typically, there are only rainbows in that area after the sun has risen in the east and it is raining. However, that morning, the sun had, yet, had not yet risen and there was no visible rain. Endless Rainbows is dedicated to Ben Stepp and his double rainbow.
Snakes is a short piece of program music which explores different sounds one might associate with different snakes. Big snakes, little snakes, cute snakes, writhing piles of snakes, swaying cobras, and dangerous snakes are all represented throughout. One of the melodies resembles the tune in which an Indian snake charmer uses to entice swinging cobra from the wicker basket. Rapid bursts of chromatic runs bring the mind coiled bring to mind coiled snakes that strike without warning. Please enjoy snakes. Danny Boy is one of over 100 songs composed of, on the same melody. Other titles include 
London Dairy Air, and Air from County Dairy. Dairy is the original name of the Northern Irish city and county. The tune first appeared in print in 1855 as a part of a publication entitled Ancient Music of Ireland. Miss Jane Ross Alim of Lim of Dady, oh boy, Lim of Dady, sorry, <laughs> supplied the untitled melody and claimed to have transcribed it from playing of an interrant piper. In 1910, an English lawyer named Frederick Edward Weatherly wrote the words and music for an unsuccessful song he called Danny Boy. Two years later, his sister-in-law, who was living in America, sent him the tune London Dairy Air. He immediately saw that the melody was perfectly suited to the lyrics of Danny Boy and published a revised version of the song in 1913. As far as it is known, Weatherly never set foot in Ireland. Please enjoy Danny Boy. Give it up for Tegan Allen, who performed trombone solo. Well done. <laughs> Next is a piece that captures the spirit of Greek music. Written in D minor, it starts slowly and continues to build speed right until the very last bars are played. The band takes turns passing around the melody, getting faster and faster. Please enjoy Greek Island Adventure.
Before the FNSS band plays their final piece for this evening, I'd like to invite Mr. Johnstone over to hand out some awards. Thank you, Ms. Tuffmeyer. All right, so we're going to start with our uh, most dedicated in senior jazz, or sorry, senior jazz band. I had myself. Senior concert band. Um, most dedicated. This person always shows up, never complains. Uh, it's always happy just to play. Sam Anderson. Come on up. <laughs> Drop the bear. <laughs> All right, for most improved, I was always looking for someone who, uh, dare I say, actually takes their instrument home and does that P word practice. Um, and this student has definitely done that this year, worked really hard to try and improve their skills. Hadley, come on. Up. And finally, for our top band geek, uh, it was tough because we got Lotsie in there. So I had to narrow it down to one, and this year, I think uh, most deserving, I felt, was someone you heard just do a wonderful trombone solo. Tegan Allen. <laughs> Favorite time of the year, some speech time. Okay, so this year we have five students who will be graduating in a few short weeks. And I always believe that it's really important that we take a brief pause from the music to say thank you and honor these students for their contributions they've made not only to the music department, but to FNSS and Fort Nelson as a community. For without these students and their passion for music making, there would be no reason for us all to be here tonight. Now, if this is your first time attending a year-end concert, which some of you in grade eight might be. Um, you may be wondering why they're getting this frame with like orange fabric in it. Um, that's a good question. Well, many years ago, um, I was looking for sort of a way to thank my grads. I think I started doing this in 2012. I'm trying to think how many years I've been doing it. And I wanted to find a way to honor our graduating students. And I thought about how much time um, they had spent in the band room. So, I decided to give them a piece of it. <laughs> so this is literally a piece of the band room that they get to take with them. Now, before we get to our grads, I actually want to invite up Angie and Eli. So if you two want to come up here really quickly. Now, uh, some of you may know uh, their situation next year, but these two amazing students have been with the music department since grade five and next year are going to be making the big move to Australia to start a new adventure down under. Now, since they won't be here when they graduate, I did want to take a moment to recognize the hard work and dedication that these two students have put in over the last four years by giving them a bite-sized <laughs> piece of the wall that they can bring with them. So, Thank you, Angie. Thank you, Eli, for being such incredible trombone players. Your section, along with the rest of the band, is going to miss you like crazy next year. I know you'll have lots of adventures at your new school, and I hope you'll stay in touch. Have fun and good luck. All right, Mr. Streeper, come on down. Safety first. <laughs> That's always good. <laughs> he went the long way around, apparently. <laughs> He's going to pop out over there. Yeah. All right. You get to stand right there. Okay. Uh, our first grad this evening is Mr. Jordan Streeper. 
So, back in 2011, most grade five students had a general music class that I taught, where we learned the basics of reading music, how to sing, and how to play the ukulele. Now, Jordan was in Miss Doherty's class, which happened to be a grade five split, uh, split that year. It was decided that grade five students in that class would be provided with the opportunity to take band if they wanted to. Jordan signed up, and eight years later, he is now performing in his final concert this evening. Jordan was a hardworking and dedicated band student right from the very beginning. He demonstrated excellent ability on the clarinet and within no time made the switch over to bass clarinet. Jordan always challenged himself to learn the hardest music he could get his hands on and play in every ensemble available. He was the first grade six to ever join tour band and learned to play the very sax so he could play in junior jazz right away. It was evident from these early years that Jordan was gonna be an important member of the music department. Over the last six years, Jordan has traveled on every trip available to him. His first big trip in 2014 when we traveled to New York. Jordan was in grade seven at the time and was only a few students his age to come along. Now, for those of you who've been to New York know how busy the streets can be, especially near Times Square. While we were walking from a restaurant back to Times Square, Jordan somehow found himself separated from the group. As you can imagine, there were a few moments of panic when we did our count off and discovered we were one short. Now, luckily, Jordan used his street smarts and stayed exactly where he was, and we were able to reunite him with the group. Needless to say, Jordan has all, or needless to say, Jordan all stayed close to chaperones for the rest of that trip. <laughs> I think we also took five years off his mom's life, too. <laughs> Sorry about that. So after New York, he's traveled to Saskatchewan, Hawaii, Seattle, Vancouver, and most recently, San Francisco, along with every trip to Grand Prairie and to Toad River. In 2015, he teamed up with Kiara, Jason, and Mary Andy. Uh, Mary Annie is one of the founding members of the FNSS Sax Quartet. This group was not part of any course, and there were no grades attached to it. They met purely for their shared love of playing. The ensembles worked incredibly hard, practicing at least twice a week, and they have been rewarded by earning a gold rating at every festival they have attended over the last five years. I know that Hannah and Kenzie are gonna miss you in the sax quartet. The jury's still out whether or not your brother's gonna miss you. <laughs> Thank you, Jordan, for everything you've given the music department over these last eight years. It seems like just yesterday I was watching you crawl across the stage in a dog costume at the end of Annie. And here you are about to walk across the stage for graduation. I have no doubt that you're going to be successful in wherever life takes you, and I hope that somehow you will find a way to take that bass clarinet with you and continue to make music part of your life. Congratulations. We'll do one more. Savannah Gill. All right. Unlike the rest of the grads, Savannah did not begin band in grade five or six, but rather grade seven when she was in Miss Sittler's class. Now, most students who join late have a difficult time catching up to their peers, but not Savannah. She would diligently take her instrument home week after week and do something that I wish everyone did more often, practice. <laughs> and I'm not talking about the type of practice that most beginners do, where they play hot cross buns for five minutes, then put the instrument back in the case. No, Savannah worked really hard on improving her technique by practicing the difficult parts. By the end of her first year, she was not only caught up to her peers, but surpassed many of them. Savannah's hard work continued as she made her way up to the high school in the fall of 2014 for grade eight. She joined senior jazz band and tour band and even played in the community band that existed for a brief period. Over the years, she has traveled to Saskatchewan, Seattle, and Vancouver Island, along with our annual festival trips to GP. As you, as you all uh, have heard, or will hear later on this, or you have heard this year, Savannah is an outstanding musician. Her performance of God Blesses the Child uh, this year is a testament to the level of talent that she brings to any ensemble that she performs in. This year, Savannah has served as our music librarian. I'd often see Savannah take pieces home in her back backpack to sort, or fill half the MPA with sheet music as she recruited others to help her organize music. It's a tedious job, but one that must be done if we want to have any hope of finding music in the future. At our weekly council meetings, she always offered thoughtful input and ideas and found small but meaningful ways to contribute to the positive culture of the band room. Now, like all of us, Savannah's not perfect, and she can be a little forgetful at times. After jazz band, we'd often find that she forgot to put away her stool, 
or left her music out, or some days just left her complete instrument on the floor. <laughs> More than once, I found myself tripping over her overstuffed backpack and jacket that she had dropped right in front of the band room door. And I won't even bring up what your space looks like in the Husky TV room. <laughs> Let's just say it's a work in progress. Savannah, it has been an absolute honor to watch you grow into an intelligent, dedicated, hardworking uh, person that, that stands beside me today. I want you to know that along with everyone else in the music department, I appreciate everything you have given us over the last six years. And I hope that you will cherish the memories you've made along the way. I know that you and your family have an exciting adventure ahead of you as you make the transition to post-secondary school and they make the move halfway across the world to Australia. Change brings with it the unknown, which can be scary, but I hope you embrace the new opportunities it provides you with. I encourage you to share your talents, your ideas, your passions with the world around you and help to make it a better place. Thank you for being part of the band family and I wish you the best of luck and success in the future. Congratulations. Stay tuned for part two after. All right, I'm going to pass it back to Ms. Toffenmeyer. Okay. I had to wade by like three crying grads. I'm like, oh, I couldn't. There's not a lot of room back there. <laughs> okay. Johan Hansen. Did I get it right? Yes. Okay, good. The composer of Valdrez began writing the march in 1901. It was not completed until 1904. Following its premiere during an open air concert in Oslo, the composer who was playing the trumpet in the band heard only two people applaud, his two best friends. He then arranged the work for the orchestra of the National Theater by Johan Halvorsen. <laughs> the conductor and also a composer turned it down. Later, he sold the march to a publisher for 25 kroner, which is about $5. From this auspicious beginning, Valdrez March has be become known in almost every country where there is brass or, wood, or woodwind bands. Although it is his first composition, Hansen admitted near the end of his life that he had never written anything better. Please enjoy Valdrez.
While we do a quick stage change, we invite you to sit back and enjoy a slideshow of pictures taken over the year. Next, we're going to invite Savannah, Angie, and Eli to the stage. They are going to perform two trombone trios for you this evening. The first is simply called Song Lesson, and the second is called In Dreams. Please enjoy.
from the Lord of the Rings. I uh, hope you enjoy. Everyone, that's awesome. Before they retire, Savannah had a quick little announcement she was going to make. Hi, guys. Um, I just wanted to say a really quick thank you to my mom for pushing us for so long. It took me six years to play this piece, and she hasn't given up on me since then. My mom has been pushing us and pushing us and pushing us until we got this dang piece right. So I would like to give a big round of applause to my mom for being there for us. Thank you, mom. And thank you, dad, for all the, <laughs> all the times you had to listen to us practice till late at night. I know it drove us all crazy, but you know, we had to do it. <laughs> Thanks, Savannah. Now, Emily Kim is going to come out and perform a violin solo for us. Emily has recently found out that she's been accepted into the BCMEA Honor Band and will be performing with the ensemble next October in Richmond. Please enjoy.
right. So um, we've had to change our program slightly. We are going to cut into a 15 intermission now, and we are going to come back with more amazing music. We'll see you in 15. Thank you. All right, everyone, we're going to get back to some more music. So if you're out and about, if you can come take your seats. Thank you. <coughs> you are now all in for a real treat, as you are about to hear one of J.S. Bach's finest works ever written, his Triangle Sonata Number 1 for 12 Triangles. Composed in 1710 while working for the Duke William Ernest in the city of Weimar, this place was first performed for the, this piece, my apologies. This piece was first performed for the Duke at his 10th wedding anniversary. Unfortunately, the music department only has 11 triangles. So Mr. Johnstone skillfully took the original and arranged it for 11 triangles so they would be able to perform it for you this evening. This performance this evening will be a Canadian premiere. There is about 10 accents in that, I'm so sorry. Please welcome our performers to the stage for Triangle Sonata. I forgot to pack them. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, what are we going to do now?
Tonight, we are very lucky to have two piano soloists who would like to perform for you this evening. First, we will have Savannah Shepard pia pl bleh, perform Piano Man, that's a lot of P's in one row there, Whew. by Billy Joel, followed by Noelle Teoval performing Sunset in Rio. Please enjoy. On stage shortly will be the FNSS Sax Quartet. Okay. <laughs> the 
they're supposed to be there. Sorry, y'all. Oh, okay. On stage now is the FNSS Sax Quartet. Hey, there we go. This group features Caden Streeper and Kenzie Ochar on alto sax, Hannah Goff on tenor sax, and Jordan Streeper on barry sax. They've earned a gold rating at the Grand Prairie Music Festival in April, a couple months ago, April, and they will be performing one piece for you this evening, a well-known Bach piece entitled Jesu Joy of Man's Desiring. Please enjoy.
Thanks, Sax Quartet. We're just going to take a couple of minutes for the jazz band to switch over. But before we do that, I'm going to call Mr. J back up to the mic for a couple of thank yous. All right. Well, our jazz band people are coming up and resetting the stage. A uh, couple quick thank yous to hand out. Um, first of all, a big thank you to the maintenance crew at S81 for bringing down all this equipment, and they get to haul it all back tomorrow. Lucky them. Uh, so big thank you to uh, Daryl and his entire crew. Uh, thank you to Matt, who's been making sure we got sound in the booth, and his crew making sure you have some food. So big thank you to everyone here at the Phoenix Theater. A uh, special thank you to all the staff at FNSS. I know I've been stealing these kids a lot lately for all of our trips, and they always make sure that they are well fed with homework to get done, so thank you. Now, if only they would do it, that's the second part of that equation. Um, a big thank you to Dwayne, who's been extra helpful making sure our stage is set. He was here early again today. And also a big thank you to Ms. Toffemeyer, who's been our wonderful MC. She's hiding now, I think. I didn't even pay for her to do that wonderful accent, so that was just, that was a bonus. Uh, and of course, a uh, big thank you to all of you for sticking around to the end. I know everyone's busy when it comes to June. Uh, this concert's got lots of music to get through, so we really do appreciate it when you stay all the way to the end to get to listen to uh, the hard work that Jasmine's been doing. So we'll just take a couple minutes, we'll do a quick warm up here, and then we'll get on with our final set with Senior Jasmine. I'll pass it back over to Ms. Doffmeyer. Gotta do beep up blues more often. Okay, kind of kill it. Okay, here we go. Beep up blues. One, two, and one, two, three. <laughs> Jazz Band, 
This ensemble meets off the timetable and is composed of students in grades 7 through 12 who have a wide variety of experience playing jazz music. They also earned a, girl, a gold rating at the Grand Prairie Music Festival and an invitation to play at the Nationals Music Fest Canada next year in Calgary. <laughs> The first piece they are going to perform for you this evening is Blues of a Kind, composed by Doug Beach. This chart has its roots firmly in the Miles Davis classic All Blues, which the band actually played a few years ago. Listen for solos by Caden Streeper and Hannah Goff. Please enjoy Blues of a Kind. composed by Doug Beach and George Shutak, is a beautiful ballad that will feature our very own Kenzie Ochar on the alto sax. Please enjoy. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Okay. Before I say this next one, I asked five different people in this band how to pronounce this name. I got five different answers. So I'm so sorry, but I swear they're setting me up with these names and these piece names. It's, it's very stressful. I can't deal. Okay. Up next is man take. See what I mean? That piece. Composed by the famous trumpet player in 1948. <laughs> this Afro-Cuban jazz piece hints at the racial tensions present in the United States with the opening chant. Listen for solos by Kara Buchanan on the piano and pretty much everyone on percussion towards the end. Here is Man... Tenga. <laughs> Thank you. 
Once again, like to invite Mr. Johnstone over to the mic for more awards and speeches. All right, so starting with the awards, uh, we're going to start with most dedicated to senior jazz. Uh, lots of options here from people to choose from. I selected Kenzie. Oh, sure. Most improved, uh, this person was brand new to jazz band. They were in band a while ago, disappeared for a few years, and then wandered back in this year, Liam Callum. This is the same award I won in grade eight. Thank you. <laughs> it's always good to still be improving. Uh, and this year, uh, for top band geek, it was really tough, um, but I went with Savannah Gill. <laughs> All right. My next victim. McKenna. McKenna, like Jordan, was one of the lucky few to start band in grade five when she was in Miss Doherty's class. One of the first things that became apparent to me when teaching McKenna in these early years was her dry, sarcastic <laughs> sense of humor. I am well known for telling, let's say, not the greatest jokes in class, and McKenna would always call me out on them, never afraid to make a much better joke, usually at my expense. <laughs> I'm happy to report that this sense of humor has not changed in the last years, and I can still hear her eyes roll anytime I tell my quality dad jokes. <laughs> McKenna was quick to pick up the trombone and worked hard during her time at RLA to build her skill and technique. She joined jazz band in grade six and continued on in senior jazz band when she arrived at FNSS. After many years of hinting that she would like to try out the bass trombone, the music department finally bought one in 2016, and she, and she has been rocking it ever since. As a member of tour band, she has traveled to Saskatchewan, Hawaii, Seattle, Vancouver Island, and most recently, San Francisco. After Brooke graduated in 2017, the position of public relations opened up on Music Council, and McKenna put her name forward. At our weekly meetings, McKenna always presented pragmatic advice and thoughtful opinions as we planned concerts, fundraisers, and trips. For the past two years, all the posters, newspaper articles, and most of our Instagram posts have been carefully crafted by her. I've always told her that in order to be successful and relevant on social media, having lots of content is key. Now, because you're a little busy tonight, let's save you some time and post some content right now. So it's selfie time. So got it. Okay. Um, <laughs> now, when trying to think of words to describe McKenna, many came to mind. I couldn't say the first five, so I wrote down the other ones. <laughs> <laughs> Confident, driven, resourceful, insightful, independent, intelligent, friendly, honest, patient, and funny. But if I had to narrow it down to one word to describe McKenna, it would be leader. Very rarely do I have the chance to work with a student has, who has demonstrated such strong leadership skills. Whether it be at band sleepovers, fundraisers, concerts, trips, 
her work with students at the rec center, or just her day-to-day -day interactions with her peers, McKenna exemplifies what it means to be a leader. Through her kind words and actions, she inspires those around her to be a better version of themselves. I know she has certainly inspired me to be a better teacher. Next year, McKenna is off to UNBC, where she plans on studying medicine. I cannot think of anyone more fitted to take on such a demanding and important career path. As we witness the world around us become increasingly divided, I am filled with hope knowing that there are young people like you who will one day be in leaderships or leadership positions. I am incredibly honored to have had the opportunity to play a small role in your life over these past eight years. Thank you for, well, everything. I, along with the rest of the students on the stage, will miss your positive energy in the band room next fall. Saying goodbye is never easy, but remember that even when you graduate, you're always forever part of the hashtag band fam. Congratulations and best of luck at UNBC. <laughs> Thomas Goff. Now, before we start, Thomas, I just wanted to let you know that to make you feel at more at home and in your honor, I wrote the speech 15 minutes ago in the back of a napkin. So. <laughs> so I do apologize if there's any errors. Now, the year was 2013, and Thomas was in Miss Sittler's grade 7 class. It was September, and we were reviewing some of the basic concepts learned in grade six by watching a series of videos included on the DVD that came with the method book. One of these videos just demonstrated how to properly open your case, set up your instrument, and put it away after you're done playing. Thomas asked me, why on earth are we watching these stupid videos? <laughs> We've been playing our instruments for over a year. We know how to put our instrument together and put it away. I told him that while we had some new students in band, it never hurts to review even the basics. With a sigh, he rolled his eyes and begrudgingly watched the video with the class. The time arrived when everyone was to pack up and return to Angus. Thomas quickly picked up his case, only to find out that it was not shut correctly. <laughs> we watched, as if in slow motion, the trombone fly across the band room in pieces. There was a moment of awkward silence where we stared at each other, then all we could do is laugh. It was as if the gods of irony were watching down upon us and decided that that was the day that Thomas had to learn a lesson that I apparently couldn't teach him. <laughs> this was not the only time that Thomas had bad luck with his trombone. Fast forward two years and Tour Band was heading out to Toad River to perform. We packed the bus with our instruments and luggage and made the two hour journey north up the Alaska Highway. When we arrived in Toad River, we unloaded the bus only to discover that Thomas's trombone was nowhere to be found. It turns out that the bus driver had forgot to secure the latch keeping the storage bay locked and Thomas's trombone fell out of the bus onto the road. The wheels of the bus certainly did go round and round that day, <laughs> right over his trombone. <laughs> now outside of the band room, I've had the opportunity to work with Thomas, or watch Thomas Fleuris into the young man that he is today. Three years ago, I invited him to help with the community musical. He was quick to learn how to set up mics, program the soundboard, and adjust the lights. Thomas put in many late nights at the theater with me as we both uh, finalized the sound and light design for the shows. I can't tell you how many A&W burgers I watched him eat as we debated what color to light the stage with. <laughs> Last year, we started Husky TV. When I first brought the idea forward to the students, I was hesitant that there would not be enough interest to make a go of it. Boy, was I wrong. With Thomas and Sheree's leadership, Husky TV has flourished and had two successful seasons on the air with over 30 episodes produced. They are leaving behind some very big shoes to fill next year. As you've heard this evening, Thomas is an outstanding musician. Over the last seven years, Thomas has been a member of junior jazz, senior jazz, class band, and tour band. He's traveled to Saskatchewan, Hawaii, Seattle, Vancouver Island, and San Francisco. During these last two years, he has served on the Music Council, helping to plan events, organize and distribute uniforms, and provide me with the guidance on direction that the music department should take. All of this was done on top of his regular academic courses, being grad exec president, and working at Boston, grad exec, vice president? Treasure. That's close and working at Boston Pizza. He's certainly been a busy man. Uh, next year, Thomas is gonna be uh, leaving Fort Nelson to pursue studies, and you should be incredibly, incredibly proud of everything you've achieved during your time here at FNSS. You have a big life change ahead of you, and I encourage you to work hard, stay focused, and follow your passions, wherever they may lead you in the future. You have the skills and knowledge to bring about positive change in this world, and I encourage you to put them to good use. And most importantly, be sure to call your parents. 
Despite the disagreements and fights you may have had over years, they have undoubtedly been your biggest cheerleaders as you've navigated the road to adulthood. Thank you, Thomas, for the last seven years, and I wish you the best of success in the future. Congratulations. Can someone check on Sarah Goff and make sure she's okay? She's okay? <laughs> All right, last one, Kadriana. You can stay over there if you want. <laughs> We've now arrived at our final grad of the evening, Miss Kadriana Travers. <laughs> Kadriana joined band in the fall of 2012 when she was in Miss Blaze class, and right from the beginning, it was evident that she was going to fit right into band. Her bubbly personality. <laughs> <laughs> Quirky sense of humor and love of music made her a delight to have in the beginning band. She was the only trumpet player in her class and she had no problem holding down her part with confidence. It was Kadriana's confidence and her love of a challenge that led her to join tour band in the fall of 2013 and travel to New York in the spring. Since then, she has traveled to Saskatchewan, Hawaii, Seattle, Vancouver Island, and San Francisco. Kadria has been a dream to travel with. She did her part to avoid trip drama and was always accommodating with rooming. rooming. Best of all, we never lost her. <laughs> Kadriana has been hard at work editing last year's trip video and is almost done as soon as I can finish a few <coughs> technical glitches. Uh, well, in San Francisco this year, she spent much of her time hauling around the beast of a camera we have in order to ensure we got the shots and interviews we needed to make a great band video. It takes a lot of commitment to take on this duty, and I appreciate her taking the initiative to make this happen. Kadriana worked hard during her early years at FNSS and joined jazz band in grade 10. Over the past two years, she has served as trumpet section leader and helped to keep everyone organized and on task. Kadriana was always encouraging, patient, and supportive to the younger players in her section, even if they did drive her crazy some days, <laughs> or most days. It has been rewarding to watch her develop into the outstanding lead trumpet player you've been hearing tonight. Kadriana isn't afraid to take a musical risk and understands that the real magic in life happens when you step outside of your comfort zone. Not only is Kadriana an outstanding musician, she's also an incredible visual artist. I've been constantly amazed anytime she shows me a project she's working on for art class. I can barely draw a stick man, and here she comes creating these incredible 3D structures with the most incredible detail, color, and texture. These talents are going to serve her well as she plans on attending post-secondary training in digital animation and design. I hope one day to be reading your name on the uh, credits of a Pixar movie in the near future. Thank you, Kadriana, for the laughs for the tears and the musical moments we've shared over these last seven years. It certainly has been a journey with high points and low points, but you've made it. And now you are ready to begin the next chapter of your life. I can't express <laughs> how much we're gonna miss you and your dance moves in the back row next year. <laughs> The positive energy you bring to the ensemble while performing is contagious, and its effect is evident by watching the smiles in the audience light up when you are on stage. And your laugh, whether it was coming from the back row, the couch, the MPA, or the halls, I always knew you weren't nearby when I heard it. Kadriana, you are truly a kind, warm, caring, and selfless young woman who has an incredibly bright future ahead of her. And I'm so excited to see where life's path leads you. I wish you all the best, and thank you for being part of our little band family here in Fort Nelson. Thank you.
Mm-hmm. All right, before we do our final piece, I have to interject and ask that all the grads come on up really quick. school day next year because I'm (laughs) sick of yours (laughs) and I figured well we figured we could do it better so you can read one now if you want but (laughs) what is a golf club's favorite type of music swing I'd also like you to read out what the front of that jar says, please. No, other side. A fanatic keeps walking your way. Thank you so much for everything you've done for us. We appreciate it so much. It's been such an honor to grow up in this band family. Um, you've taught us so much, and we're just so, so, so thankful for everything. We've now arrived at the final piece of the evening. Yay, we made it! After a year off, Mr. Johnstone finally got his act together and arranged his fifth fromage, featuring the latest and greatest that pop music has to offer. Feel free to sing along. Here is Fromage 2019. Thank you. 
to our year-end concert for 2019. We hope you've enjoyed the show. We also invite you to the RLA and FNSS Music Department wrap-up barbecue this Saturday starting at 6 p.m. I hope, we hope, you all have a safe and enjoyable summer vacation. Good night.